Hello everybody, welcome to Leaked Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Thank you for joining us for another episode. Um, we've got, uh, this is episode 50 by the way, so that's a little bit of a milestone. And for episode 50, what I decided to do was have a wine that pretty much got me started on the whole uh, getting a little serious about wine. You know, actually, you know, <clears throat> realizing that wine and food, you know, it's not just, you know, oh, just pour me just any old glass of wine. I'd gone to a, um, a bar uh, that I used to go to all the time after work when I worked uh, really late nights in Chicago. And it was a bar called uh, Dublin's. And I asked the bartender one day, I said, just, uh, you know, find me a wine that goes well with this. Now, this place called Dublin's is outstanding food. It's a really, really small bar. Uh, but it's a great, great food. Um, it's in the Rush and uh, State area. It's across the uh, little park area from uh, uh, Tavern on Rush. Uh, you have Gibson Steakhouse. You've got Morton's Steakhouse in, a, in the high rise right behind it. Uh, Carmine's Italian food, uh, Hugo's Frog Bar, um, whiskey. You've got you've got a whole bunch of places right around there. So this is kind of high dollar area. So um, <clears throat> So what we've got, and what was what I was given, was a Ravenswood Zinfandel. I'm pretty sure it was Vinter's blend, uh, just because it, it wasn't like hugely expensive by the glass. So what we've got here is the 2007 Ravenswood Zinfandel Vinter's blend uh, from California. And uh, we got it at HEB Plus for $8.99. Um, and just a little um, reminder, Zinfandel, this is what made me love Zinfandel. It became one of my favorite varietals, um, that and Shiraz or Syrah. Um, before this, my favorite general wine was Black Opal uh, Shiraz. Um, but uh, this is what started, and then living in Chicago, having all, access to all those great restaurants that have great wine lists, and you know, have, be able to try a whole bunch of stuff. So let's check it out. I haven't had Ravenswood in a long time, so let's hope it's as good as I remember it. So, don't want to spill it. So I'm getting some some good fruit and a little bit of chocolate. Um, some darker fruits, say like dark, maybe dark cherries. Nice good color too. Try it again. good stuff. Alright, so I'm, I'm getting the fruit and I feel like I'm getting kind of leather and I, I don't know maybe like a leather and tobacco shop feel um, I don't go in tobacco shops very often. I don't smoke, but I've been around cigarettes and cigars being in the restaurant industry. Um, so I get kind of that, that little, that little hint of taste, but kind of leathery. Um, it's not heavily tannic, but it's a, it's a nice, uh, full bodied wine. It's, uh, uh, it doesn't really, it's not super dry on the mouth. Uh, <clears throat> it's as good as I remember. Uh, and, and, you know, you have to remember that you know I'm, I'm going to score this a pretty high score. Um, I mean, not not insanely high, but I'm going to score pretty high just because uh, I do like it. I think it's well made. I mean, I know it's kind of uh, it's it's widely available and and it's on a lot of lists. So you know, but it's it's good. I mean, I'm really enjoying it. I don't know why I haven't bought it recently, but. 
and just here, I think I got little hints of uh, maybe hints of vanilla. Yeah. So um, I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a ninety. This is officially my first ninety point wine. Um, I think it's excellent. It's nine bucks for ninety bucks. Um, now over the weekend, I did go to the Rambling Rosé, and uh, this will probably be my article tomorrow in I Go SA. On I Go SA, I'll probably be my article tomorrow about the Rambling Rosé experience and just kind of going up to the hill country. Um, and uh, I did have a I had, did have a wine there, a rosé that uh, I, I was really really pleased with. Um, and on my notes, I gave it a ninety. So this really my official first 90 point wine. But as far as this video is concerned, this is my first 90 pointer. Let, let's go through a little bit about Ravenswood. Um, this, uh, and according to the website, they don't put, they don't put the vintage on there. So you have to make an assumption that it's probably the 2007 vintage, but you know, what if I bought 2006 or maybe 2008 was out, you know? So um, but this is the breakdown in varietal, 76% Zin, Nine uh, percent uh, Carignan, uh, Carignan, um, eight percent Petit Syrah, and seven percent they said mixed black grapes. Okay, give me the rest. It'd be kind of nice to know what was in there, but um, it's a uh, it's uh, aged for twelve months in French oak, twenty percent, twenty five percent, which is new. So you get a little bit of that creaminess. It's not it's not it doesn't kill you. Um, the winery is in Sonoma County, uh, even though this wine is picked from uh, California, anywhere in California. The Vintner's Blend uh, refers to the winemaker um, you know, trying to find the best Zins, or in general all the grapes are used in there, but in general the best Zins throughout California and to combine them into one wine that tries to reflect what they're trying to do. This is very much in uh, uh, what Burgundy does. Uh, if you've watched the sommelier school, you heard me use the word negotiant. Um, that's what a negotiant does. They don't necessarily own a winery. Um, they usually go through all the plots of land throughout Burgundy, uh, maybe within a village, or maybe within a, um, an appellation, or maybe throughout Burgundy. That's what they're doing here. Um, they also have things like they have like a county and a vineyard thing. So they, they very much follow the, the Burgundy style, Burgundian style of making wine in that sense. Um, if you go to the website, you know you can tell that that's what they're trying to do, kind of an older world uh, way of making wines. First vintage for, for uh, this was 1976. Uh, they launched, not for Vintners, but their first, uh, 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 first vintage for Ravenswood um, or for the, for the winery. Then uh, they launched the Vintners blend in the late 80s. It's owned by Constellation Brands now, uh, and it's part of their... According to the website, part of their Franciscan Estates Fine Wine Division. Though I didn't see that on the Constellation Brands website, but I didn't really go too far in depth with that. Um, got my Tweet Camp shirt on. Uh, they got Bar Camp coming up here in San Antonio on the 26th of September. It's a free deal. Uh, very similar to, to Tweet Camp. Uh, lots of, um, you know, uh, was it an unconference conference? So uh, it's not necessarily a, a re regimented, we're going to have a thing on this, 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 and this. Um, I plan on going to that, so uh, mark that on your calendar. we got some good stuff going on. I've got some things in the works, and I just have to say, it, it's real exciting. What I've got in the works coming up, as long as all this stuff comes to fruition um, from the people I'm talking with, so got that. I really appreciate you guys going through 50 episodes with me. Hope to have another 50 um, in another couple months, and just click on the click on the links, friend me up, send me, you know, send me emails, uh, send donations. You got the donation things down there. You send donations or do a little subscription. So I have the one my one um, uh, sponsor, so to speak, uh, and I really appreciate uh, that he did that. Um, so do all that and tell your friends about it. I mean, grow this up. Uh, we were getting more and more views to the website and more and more views every day on these episodes, and it's real exciting. Thanks for stopping in, and we'll see everybody again next time.